tonight. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us tonight here at Beacon Baptist Church. And so good to see so many visitors this morning. So uh, so wonderful to see so many visitors here again tonight, uh, returning tonight to be with us. And then also uh, several first-time visitors here with us as well. Thank you so much for, pl for being here in the service tonight. We do hope, and our prayer has been all week, that all of you that have gathered here today will receive a blessing uh, from the Lord from the services today. And uh, so we're trusting the Lord to do that uh, this evening. Amen. I, I do want to. I do want to say as well uh, that I do thank everyone of parts of the families of those that have come. I know I mean so much to our young people uh, that you have come to uh, see them be a part of tonight's uh, service. Whether they're playing uh, instrumentals, whether they're singing, uh, or just whatever part of tonight they are a part of, I know it means the world to them to have you uh, here supporting them and behind them and uh, and again I'm not I'm not trying to uh, trying to, to say that I know everything but one thing I'll, I will say is I know that these young people need to know in the day and hour that we're living in uh, that when they serve God their families in their corner uh, one of the most discouraging things to any person but especially young people is they have a heart to serve God and they don't feel like their families behind them uh, every step of the way so thank you for showing your support for them tonight 
tonight by being here this evening. And again, I do give a word of welcome and thank, it's thanks to each and every one of you that are here today. Amen. Let's just have a word of prayer together and ask God's blessings on the service tonight. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence once again as thankfully and humbly as we know how. Thank you, Lord, for another day, another opportunity, God, that you've given us to come into the house of God to meet with your people. Thank you, Lord, for each and every one of these that have gathered here tonight. Uh, Lord God, to celebrate your birth, to encourage a young person to uh, join in, uh, Lord God, in the uh, celebration tonight of the fact that we realize that over 2,000 years ago, you sent your only begotten son into this world, as that song said just a minute ago, Lord, that you came into this world born to die. And Lord God, just as the preacher preached this morning out of Luke 19, we realize that the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. And that would not be possible if it was not for you being born to die. Lord, the, 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 the manger means so much to us as we think about, uh, Lord God, the truth concerning Christmas tonight. But Lord, if there, if there is a manger, that means that there is also a cross. And I pray, dear God, if there's one here tonight that does not know you in the free pardon of sin, Lord, if they've never been born again, they've never asked Christ in their heart to save them, I pray that they would do it tonight before they leave these grounds. There's no better place to give your heart to Christ than right here in the house of God. And I pray that uh, you would help uh, them to see their need of a Savior and be born again tonight. Father, I do pray if there's a Christian here that is saved, but they're not where they need to be with you, you would work on their heart. And Lord, may they do business with you and get the help they need. And may every child of God that's here receive all of the things from your hand and from the Spirit of God that they stand in need of tonight. Lord, most of all, Lord, we did come and we are thankful to be able to support young people. We are thankful to be able to come and be a part of a worship service. But this is not, this uh, service tonight is absolutely worthless and in vain if we do not have a heart that is ready to worship you. I pray, dear God, we won't come to be entertained, but I pray, God, we come to worship as we sing and as we hear these hymns. And uh, the story of Christmas from the Word of God. I pray that you'd help all of us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, I pray that you would receive glory in this house tonight. And Lord, I pray to your God that you'd bless everything that's going to be said and done. Touch the young people as they sing. Touch them as they play. Touch them, Lord, as they do. Lord, the things that they're doing, all that are going to take part in tonight's service. I pray, God, that you'd bless. I pray that you'd bless our missionaries that was with us this morning that have joined us again tonight. Lord, as we try to to uh, encourage them and love on them this Sunday before Christmas. I pray you'd bless in that, and I pray, God, you'd give them honey for their journey and stir uh, them up to go back to the nation of Albania and serve you in a great and mighty way. Lord God, I pray that you'd get all glory to yourself and help those gathered here today in a way that only you can. And Father, I pray that the message of tonight would be the message of Christmas, the message of a Savior. And Father, we bless your name for it now. In the name that is above every name we pray in the name of Jesus Christ it is that we pray amen and amen
little bit different to sing at Christmas time. It's normally a song that's sung around Easter time, almost every Easter. I know I think just about every Easter around here we sing it. But there is the first few verses of the very first line that I believe points us back to Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and the, in the Christmas story where it says that they shall call his name Jesus and for he shall save his people from their sins. And so you worship with us, you sing this song as we normally sing it around Easter, but let's sing it at Christmas time. I'm thankful that Jesus is alive tonight. Amen. And it all, it, it, the, the story of what we know in the Bible, of course we know he didn't have a beginning, but as far as his presence here on earth, he started as a baby and became the Savior, walked this earth perfectly, and went to Calvary. Amen. And so we'll sing this song together tonight. And if you want to join us, you're more than welcome to. I know it's hard not to sing along. Let's sing it together tonight in the choir.
want to say this tonight. I am thankful that Jesus is alive. And we were able to sing about that just a second ago. And uh, I am I'm absolutely so glad to be able to report to you this evening that because God did send his son and because he was named Jesus and that means Savior, uh, everything that song talked about we have hope for in tomorrow. Amen. All of these young people when they were born, if you know Christ is your Savior, you had hope for their existence. We have hope for our lives. Amen. Uh, when this life is over, if this life may not be much down here, but if you know Christ, you have everything you need. Amen. And you've got something to look forward to. And when you do cross death's chilly Jordan, you don't have to face it fearful. Amen. But you can face it with hope and joy. Amen. Here's what I want them to do tonight. We'll sing that chorus together. If you want to join with us tonight, let's sing that whole last verse again. And we'll sing that and then we'll move on to our next song. Look at Because He Lives for just a minute. Again, choir, I know we didn't practice that, but let's do that. Sing that last verse tonight and sing that last chorus, that chorus again. And you worship with us tonight. I hope you already have. But if you haven't yet, let's use this time to do that. Amen. All right, let's sing it again. Amen. singing this last tonight because this song, while we sing it at Christmas and it is known as a Christmas song, it's not really a Christmas song. It talks about events that take place much later than the manger and uh, that's when the Lord doesn't come back the first time. He's already done that, but when he comes back the second time and he rules and reigns in this world and all of the nations have bound before him and he's in authority over all and uh, I look forward to that day. Amen. Look forward to um, the thousand year reign of Christ. Look forward to eternity, and I hope you do as well. But that's what this song talks about, and I thank God for it. Amen. You worship with them as they sing.
much to do really quick. It wasn't part of my original plan. But, um, and I know we're going to read these here in just a few minutes, but uh, my son, Wyatt, has been working on learning the Christmas story. And uh, he's memorized a good portion of, I believe, the first 13 or 14 verses of Luke chapter number 2. So I'm going to hand him this microphone, and I'm going to let brother, uh, Wyatt, you come, and uh, you tell us your verses, and I'll tell you when to start, okay? You hold this, I'll tell you when to start. Daddy's going to double check him. Amen? <laughs> All right. Let's make sure he didn't sneak an NIV on us or something. Amen? Amen. He has no idea what that even means yet. Amen? Yeah. That kid's never known anything but a King James Bible. Amen? Amen. All right, Why You go ahead, buddy. Luke 2, 1 through 14. When it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Simonius was going to Assyria. And all went to be taxed. Everyone into that own city. Went up from Galilee into the city of David and to Judea unto the city of Nazareth. In, which is called Bethlehem. Which is called Bethlehem. Because. Because. He was of the house. He was in the house in lineage of David. To be taxed. To be taxed with Mary, his expected wife, being great with child. And so it was. And so it was. While they were there. That while they were there. The days were accomplished. That she. That she should be delivered. And she. And she brought for her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country. And they were in the same country. Shepherds. Shepherds. Were abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shall round about them. And they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Which shall be? That shall be all people. For unto you, for unto you, is born this day in the city of David. In the city of David, a savior, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. Which is Christ the Lord. And this, in this, say it, son, shall be a sign unto you. This shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe. You should find the babe. Wept in swollen clothes. Lying. Lying in a manger. And suddenly. And suddenly. Say it, son. There was with the angels. A multitude. A multitude. Of the heavenly host. Of the heavenly host. Praising God and saying. Praising God and saying. Glory. Glory to God in the highest. Say it. You know it. Glory to God in the highest. And on and uh, on a uh, peace. On on of peace. Son, you know it. Good will toward men. Good will toward men. All right. Thank you, son. <laughs> Not bad for a five-year-old, I'd say. Amen. And. Uh, so great job, son. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I could tell toward the end y'all had made him nervous, and he was just going to let me spoon feed him the words. Amen. So, amen. But, but so good. Thank you, son. That was a blessing. Amen. All right, Emma, you come first. You're the oldest. You show us how it's done.
Berlin. And that was Miss Emma Cockrell, and she did a great job on that song. Thank you for doing that. Miss Annabelle Cockrell is going to come and play for us now. And I appreciate her wanting to use her talents for the Lord. And I appreciate the family of these young girls being with us tonight. And uh, I know you should be proud of these young ladies. Amen. Y'all worship with her as she plays. enjoy that say amen. amen amen here at Beacon Baptist Church I hope you can tell we love our young people and uh, I want to give them every opportunity to serve God that they can that they can find amen I don't want to I don't want to be the one that turns the spout of what they want to do for God's glory off I want to be someone that fans the flame of the, the revival fires that God puts in their heart amen? amen and I think that's what our churches ought to be I think if we have a church that's alive we will be producing another generation generation to serve God and to take the reins of this church for tomorrow. Amen. And we're so thankful for all of these young people tonight. Amen. All right. I'm going to have, I, I guess we've had some of the younger ones. Now I'm going to have some of the older ones. And I'm going to have Miss Kenzie and Brother James White. Y'all come and uh, they're going to minister to us in song. And uh, then we will share the Christmas story here at the conclusion of that. You worship with them as they sing.
Amen. What a blessing that was. Amen. And uh, sounds like they need to get them a bus. Amen. That was good. Amen. Enjoyed that. And uh, all, I'm always amazed by family harmony, how God just puts that together. Amen. And uh, it's almost like God created family voices to blend together. Amen. Must mean to me that God wants families to do things together and singing about Him's one of them. Amen. And uh, praise the Lord. Amen. All right. If I could have somebody help me with the lights tonight. Somebody grab the lights. All of our young people come and uh, we will read the Christmas story together tonight. Amen. Y'all gather around me. Find your spot. I know my son just quoted a lot of it just a few minutes ago. We're going to read this together. Luke chapter number 2, of course there's other places in the Scripture where we find pieces of the Christmas story, but this is the most, the most famous, the most well known, and contains the greatest portion of what we call the Christmas story. Before we get into reading, I want to begin by uh, having a word of prayer. Zach, you have a seat, buddy. Amen. Good to see you, Zach. Amen. All right. Amen. He's, he's good. All right, let's have a word of prayer together. Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all you've done tonight already. Thank you, Lord, for all these precious souls that have gathered around me tonight. Father, I pray your blessings upon each one. I pray, Lord, if there's one that one amongst them, Lord, that is not saved, I pray, God, that they'd be saved while they're young. I pray, God, that you would use them for your glory, call them to your ministry, call them to some area of service, equip them to serve you while they're young. Put a seriousness and a burden for the things of God in their heart right now. And I pray that as we have times like this this evening, Lord, you'd continue to put a hunger for more of God and, Lord God, more of your truth and more of the Christ's life in their life. Father, I just pray that you'd use this time for your glory. Help us, Lord, to uh, bless your name. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the words of Scripture that we're about to read. May it be more than just a story. May it be, may it be the truth of God from heaven's love letter to us. Lord, as we, real, as we read these pages, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, to realize, Lord, that we are reading the story of how you began in the earthly sense to initiate the plan of salvation, Lord God, that you had offered before the foundation of the world. Father, we do pray tonight, God, that if there's one in this church, whether it be these young people in front of me or whether somebody in the congregation that is not saved, Lord, that you'd help them to realize that Christmas is more than gifts. It's more more than lights. It's more than fun times. But Lord God, it's about the Son of God that went to Calvary, and He was the greatest gift ever given because You gave Your Son so that we wouldn't perish, but that we could have everlasting life. May everyone leave here tonight knowing that they possess life eternal. And Father, we'll thank You, Lord, for what You do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Before we read the Christmas story tonight, I've already had some of the young people already come up to me and share with me about some things they're asking for for Christmas. But somebody tell me what you're, what you, what you're wanting for Christmas, what you're asking for. I'll call names. <laughs> Wyatt, what you asking for, buddy? What do you want? Toy guns. Toy guns, okay. Uh, my little man likes to hunt deer already, so he likes his toy guns. Amen. All right. Amen. That's a manly thing. That's a boy thing. Amen. All right. Somebody else. Julian, what are you asking for, buddy? Um, a monster truck. Monster truck. Okay. Amen. He loves some monster trucks. Amen. JJ, what are you what are you thinking about asking for? Asking for? I've already asked for a beanbag. What's that? A beanbag. A beanbag. Okay. Amen. Okay. Amen. All right. What about you guys? Same thing? Okay. Amen. We got some kids that like to lounge, apparently. Amen. I hadn't heard anybody ask for a beanbag chair and your beanbag in years. So, amen. Praise the Lord. What about you, buddy? Um, uh, I like my down and thing. Uh-huh. Okay. Amen. All right. Amen. What about you, Zach? Oh, uh, uh, we'll see. That's funny. 
I'll pour it first. What's it called, sir? I say I'll pour in the car. Yes, yes. Said the pour in the square. Okay, buddy. Amen. Amen. All right, Annabelle, what about you? A horse. A horse, okay. <laughs> All right, bro. All right. Amen. Maria and Patrick, y'all have an expensive list. All right, amen. Emma, what about you? An iPod. An iPod, okay. Again, an expensive list. All right. Yes, sir, buddy. Oh, you want a real monster truck. He said he wants a monster truck that, that him and his Peapaw can drive. That's what he wants. Amen. Amen. All right, Riley, what about you? Um, I want a lot of stuff. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Name one of them. Hey, dudes. Hey, dudes. Shoes, okay. All right. What about you, Allison? A guitar. A guitar, okay. All right. Well, what about some of the Wilsons? What about y'all? Y'all thinking about anything? Want anything? Huh? A dragon truck. No. A dragon truck. A dragon truck, okay. All right. Anybody else have something? I have a dragon truck. Yeah, okay. Hey, Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else have anything? Eli, do you, what are you asking for for Christmas, buddy? Dinosaurs, okay. If I were to ask my youngest, I can promise you he would say dinosaurs too. Yeah, dinosaurs too. <laughs> Joey said dinosaurs too. <laughs> All right, amen. All right, well, I hope you get what you're asking for. And if not, I hope you get some stuff that makes it a lot better that you didn't get the stuff you're asking for. Amen. But uh, so thankful for Christmas. And of course, we know Christmas is not, even though we love gifts, and it's always fun to get gifts, always a wonderful thing to get gifts. As we mentioned just a minute ago, we all know, of course, that Christmas is not about the gifts that we get under the tree, but it's about a gift that God put on a tree on the cross for our sins. And so Christmas is about Jesus, and I hope each and every one of you uh, have the most wonderful, happiest, merriest Christmas that you can have. And I hope all along that you remember that Jesus is really the reason for it all. Let's read his story, and uh, then we will move on tonight. Luke chapter number 2 is the passage that we're reading from. Luke chapter number 2, verse number 1 through 20. And the Bible says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the, with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto 
Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. And that is the story of Christmas. And I'm thankful that there is, as there was on that day, a Savior that was born, and we know that He's Jesus. And I hope all of you young people know Jesus as your Savior. If not, I would invite you to come to know Jesus as your Savior today. I think all of you know by now, you can always come talk to me. You can always talk to your parents, I'm sure. And if you don't feel like you can, you can always come talk to me and my wife. And I would love to take this Bible that we just read from and show you how you can be saved. Because that is, if, if you like getting gifts at Christmas, the greatest gift that you can give the Lord Jesus on His birthday and on Christmas Day is your very heart. The greatest gift you can give Him is yourself, and I hope that you've done that already. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank You, Lord, for the Word. Thank You, Lord, for the Christmas story. I pray that You'd bless it, Lord, that You have blessed it in our hearing. I pray that You'd bless it in our hearts and in our lives. May it be everything that You'd have for it to be. May every one of these young people, may everyone in this room come to know You as Savior, if they have not before tonight, tonight. And Father, we thank You, Lord, for the gift that You gave to this world, the gift of Your only begotten Son. So